want to call to order the regular scheduled council meeting for Monday, July 22nd, 2019. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, we do have Reverend Wade in. If you could come up and just say a, a quick prayer, sir. Let's bow our heads. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all of the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens out of the mouth of babes and sucklings at the ordained strength. We thank for this time of sharing as we come with this council. We pray for the divine guidance, direction, protection. We're praying for our mayor, our city. All those who shall come today, guide our hearts, our minds, and our spirits in what we say and do, that the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts be accepted in our sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. 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 Clerk Santos, roll call, please. First District Councilwoman Myrtle Maldonado. Third District Councilwoman Brenda Walker. Present. Fourth District Councilwoman Christine Vasquez. Present. Fifth District Councilman Robert Garcia. Present. Sixth District Councilwoman Gilda Orange. Present. Councilman at Large Richard Medina. Here. Councilman at Large Emiliano Perez. Councilman at Large Kenneth Monroe. Present. Council President Lenny Francisco. Present. For the record, Clerk Santos, I did get a call from uh, Councilwoman Maldonado. Councilman Perez, uh, they will be at the next meeting. I have a motion to accept the meetings for the regular scheduled meeting for June 24, 2019. So, Mr. President. Second. Point of order, President uh, Francisco. In my review, there's a, an error on page two. Uh, down, uh, the record, uh, clerk wants to change that. Uh, You're, you're aware of that? Okay. Motion was made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman, was it Medina? To accept the minutes for the regular scheduled meeting. Any questions on the motion besides? Clerk Santos, roll call, please. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Medina? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Yes. Do we have any communications from the mayor? Any communications from department heads? Yes. The counts fail to warrant 0709199CC, 071219CB, 071719CC, 072219BD. 072219 LA and 072219CC. So moved. Second. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilwoman Walker to accept payroll accounts payable warrants as read. Any questions on the motion? Clerk Santos, roll call, please. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Medina? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francis? Yes. Payroll warrant bi weekly 071219 and payroll warrant monthly 070119. So moved, Mr. President. Second. Motion was made by Councilman Garcia, seconded by Councilman Monroe. To accept payroll warrants as read. Any questions on the motion? Clerk Santos, roll call, please. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Horn? Yes. Medina? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francisco? Yes. Have any committee reports? Yes, Mr. President. Councilman Garcia? Yeah, after our last. Uh, Council meeting, uh, we got uh, 
I got together with Attorney Buscemi. We wrote a letter to the governor, and I, I want to read that into the record. It says, Dear Governor Holcomb, I'm writing on the behalf of the East Chicago City Council to express our strong displeasure with the, the con continuous closure of Indianapolis Boulevard, US 12 bridge and roadway in the city of East Chicago. This bridge and roadway are a vital north-south route needed to deliver police, fire, and emergency medical services to citizens of our city. <clears throat> The bridge and road work have already been closed in excess of three months, commencing back on April 1st for bridge deck replacement and resurfacing of the roadway. Our city was just informed that although the bridge deck replacement is complete, the pavement resurfacing project is, continu is continuing and the vital bridge and roadway will continue to be closed until at least August 31st, 2019. This additional delay is not acceptable and continues to endanger the public health and safety of the citizens of East Chicago. On behalf of the East Chicago City Council, I request that at least one of the roadway lanes be immediately reopened for north and southbound traffic, even with a flagger directing traffic if necessary. The public safety of the citizens of East Chicago is at stake in this matter. I request your time of response. Uh, Robert Garcia, Public, cha uh, public Safety uh, Chairman. It was sent um, and they end up opening it one lane, I, I guess starting Friday or Saturday. So um, they heard our concern. Um, I know they continue having some issues there, but at least it is open right now. Um, I would like to see if we could send a thank you letter to, uh, to the governor to get that uh, done for us. Councilwoman Orange. Uh, Councilman Garcia, I'd like to thank you also for uh, bringing up that letter. And then the citizens of East Chicago played their part, from my understanding. Yeah. They got them from Facebook. They called um, the director of NDOT, and, I, and with all the help that we could get, I think that, that helped. Yes, it did. I get that open. Thanks to the citizens for speaking up. Yep. Any other committee reports? Moving on, do we have any board reports? Councilman Santos, do we have any ordinances on first reading? No, Mr. President, no ordinances on first or second reading. Councilwoman Orange. Uh, Mr. President, I would like to bring um, ordinance number 190008 um, off the table. It was tabled uh, June the 10th. Second, Mr. President. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilman Garcia to hear Ordinance 19-0008. Councilwoman Orange, was that on second reading? It was tabled. Second third. It was tabled on second. It was tabled on second. Second to hear uh, Ordinance 19-0008 on second reading. Do have any questions? Councilman Medina. Prior to this uh, being tabled. Do we know the changes that were made? Yeah, there are quite a few, Councilman Medina. Um, we worked out some language requiring other entities how they could or would uh, refer uh, cases of parental neglect to the program. Uh, we also worked with the uh, city court uh, on their role within the program. Those have been hashed out. City court is 100% in favor of this I believe they, uh, their issue was whether it was um, violating another separate statute that they're comfortable with the language as far as we know with uh, the operation of the program. Within the okay, this ordinance doesn't outline um, cost and who's going to bear the cost of enacting this. It's going to be under city court. As a director of city truancy program, who is that person going to be? Uh, who are they going to answer to? How much are they going to make? What's this program going to cost us ultimately? Do, do we know those? Those weren't within the ordinance detail. Shouldn't uh, all that have been placed in the ordinance? That's a policy decision by the council. Um, I believe Councilwoman Orr was uh, the head of the committee who was taking all these decisions. We were merely asked, uh, Councilman Medina, to review the language the ordinance to assure that it was, uh, didn't violate or whether it, as much as it could, uh, fit into state statute, and we have. 
but it's still not clear to me as to who the director is going to be and who's going to hire that director and who that director is going to answer to and at what cost. It's something I think that's important. It should have been outlined either briefly or, or, uh, or verbatim in, in this ordinance. Councilwoman Orange, can you? Yes, um, we would have, we, we've been working on this since November. It was uh, first brought to this council in April. And uh, we will uh, put that forward uh, to the city court and also to the city. The school city is saying that they do not have all of the funds. The mayor has uh, decided that he would help step in to help the school city with the truancy program. Uh, none of that was going to be worked out if we couldn't pass the um, truancy uh, ordinance. And uh, that will be within the next two weeks. We could give you all that information. Perhaps we should vote on this in the next two weeks. I, I would really like to see it all written in stone uh, so there's no question about it in the future. So that there's, uh, uh, you know, we got to cross the T's and dot the I's. Uh, in my opinion. Councilwoman Orange? And I understand uh, what you're saying, uh, Councilman Medina, but um, it will be coming back in front of the council on the, the cost, and um, that was something that in April when we first tabled this and all the questions we asked, if anybody had any questions, nobody brought that up. Uh, this going forward is going to be worked out with the school city, the mayor, and the court, and then we could bring you back the numbers after that. I know. I may I believe there's some memorandum of understandings that are yet to be drafted between those agencies and entities. But this had to be done first. The ordinance, the structure of the ordinance enacting the program was the first step. Uh, um, there's nothing not allowing the cost and the procedures to be enacted at the same time. There's nothing prohibiting it. Because it's not in writing. It's, there's nothing to prohibit it being uh, a burden on the city entirely and not on school city or any other entities that are involved in this and that's that's why I bring up this question I if it's going to be a, a program that's going to be directed and influenced by different entities uh, within our, our area here then they equally need to share the, the cost and also the direction of it Again, who's the director going to be and who are they going to answer to? Those, those are the questions that I'd like to see answered before I could make uh, an honest opinion of vote, a yes or a no. Councilwoman Orange? We've had meetings uh, since November every Thursday. And all the uh, principals of the uh, Urban Enterprise, the uh, St. Stan School, and also the um, UEA. Jimmy's. Um and so all these principals have come together to talk about this problem because it is truly a problem. And I understand what you're saying with the cost, but one thing about it is the council has a deciding factor over total cost. And I would just ask uh, that we uh, pass this tonight. This is so important to our kids that you just don't know. And I'm just asking that we pass this and that uh, we move forward. Um, with the program and um, as you know me I have never been a big uh, cost person of, of spending uh, 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 that's not necessary but at this point it's been so hard for us just to get this done and so now to hold it up another two weeks and another two weeks and then somebody doesn't like the the person that they pick and then we go back and forth and who's suffering in all this is our children Councilman yeah, Medina. I, I could sympathize with that, uh, and uh, yeah, I'm in favor of anything to help our children, be it through the school city or through uh, civil city. Uh, I, I know that there are there are laws in place, and, and some type of truancy program that uh, solely lies on on the lap of school city, and and by now us joining in in uh, creating this, uh, we're going to share the burden, the cost. It is important, and I am in favor, again, of doing anything for our children. But as a city council member, it's my duty to make sure that uh, we're, we're conserving the city dollars and allowing school city to spend their dollars where, where they fit. Uh, I 
am I correct? Is, isn't there supposed to be a truancy program in existence through School City of Chicago? The Indiana Code allows there for two years to be a appointed uh, truancy officer by the school district with the um, duties of parental neglect and uh, correcting attendance. And, and I by no way uh, want to sit here and scrutinize who the director is going to be or, you know, any, anything of that nature. Just it should be outlined in the ordinance who the director is going to be hired by, under, at what cost, and who they're going to answer to. That's, that's my opinion. Councilman Garcia? Yeah, uh, just for the attorney, uh, can you outline the, in our next meeting or send us uh, the changes in red? Sure, I could go over them now if you like, but uh, are you asking for the changes from the original ordinance to from now? The, the original to now. But you don't have to go through it right now. Yeah, there were it's, many versions back and forth. Yeah. But I could get you the, the original. Correct. And today, there's probably four or five versions that went back between uh, our office, the school city of uh, <coughs> Chicago attorneys, and the city uh, judge attorney as well. So I don't know if I could get you uh, an exact, but I could get you the original as much as I can to you. Councilman Garcia. So, um, on the positions of this, so we don't, you don't come back and it's going to be an appropriation or it's going to be a memorandum of understanding, reference to positions, and how much? I think it's going to be a memorandum of understanding. Um, Attorney Jewel Harris is working that out amongst the different schools that are going to be involved, the different agencies that are going to be involved, and uh, the school board would have to make a decision and adopt the policy. So that's why we're in trying to hurry up and make sure that it's in their policy manual. They start school the 14th of August. Uh, they start registration, I think, on the 1st and 2nd. And uh, it's truly needed. And I, people that, I've been doing this since November, every Thursday. Uh, myself, uh, Councilman Kenny Monroe, uh, that we really feel that it's a necessity. And don't think it's just our school district that's doing this. We have found out through the meetings that we've had that Lowell, Crown Point, Maryville, uh, Gary, Bl uh, Black Oak, um, Holbert. No, oh, I'm sorry, not Black Oak, Lake Station. Lake Station. And uh, the uh, Lake Ridge School District, all of them have adopted a, a policy. Uh, in conjunction with the school city because with their school districts because this is so important and kids are missing on every level it doesn't make any difference what economic background you have and I know that the school city should be um, maybe in the forefront of this and maybe doing the more of the burden but at the end of the day we're trying to make sure we save our children and if we can help them along until they can be financially able to do what they need to do and this is what we have to do it, it uh there's some horror stories out there with the truancy programs of, of kids uh from them staying in the library all day long uh not going to school uh missing and the uh police having to pick up the children kids sitting in the parks all day and you don't know it's a problem until somebody brings it to you and so that's the reason why we have uh, decided to bring this forward, and I'm hoping that my colleagues will support this. Councilman Monroe. Okay, uh, we, we've been dragging this thing on, I think, for no reasons, just to be dragging. And when it comes down to kids, you guys, everybody know I'm a different person. To stop playing the games, we got all these other schools doing it. We got a bunch of entities. All kind of people involved, from the judge to Jenison, even got your um, Catholic stand, stand and all them. Everybody's on board with this. And I can understand some of the things that we all need to know, but we need to get this off the ground. And uh, we do not need to counsel it again. We do not. So let's get it over with now. Let's go. Councilwoman Orange. Also, you know, like I said, this is the first time I think that the school city and the city have come together since they parted ways as far as an elected school board. And it did, just didn't come up overnight. I mean, you, you had Marcus Jefferson has been in the forefront of uh, this project, of uh, bringing it to our attention, how it switched, changed the grades in, uh, at Gary Roosevelt to make a difference in those kids' lives. 
They went from a F school to a C school to a A school in their attendance. Um, we, half of our kids, most parents do not know that if your children miss 39 days of school, if from ninth grade to 12th grade, they can't even graduate. And I think that is a big shock. That was a shock for me. I thought that, hey, you go to school, and that doesn't make any difference if you're a straight A student. You would have to ask for a waiver from the state to be able to graduate. People just do not realize how important the attendance is. And I know we're talking about a lot of dollars. We spend a lot of money every two weeks up here, and nothing is more important than these kids. And I'm asking my colleagues to go along with this ordinance. We can come back to the table and hash out stuff. You may not like who's going to be the uh, the uh, the director, or somebody may not like what's going on. But we, this uh, program deserves a chance because if we don't do uh, this now, these these kids are going to be lost. And for kids not to be able to graduate and have a waiver, you can't even go to the army with a waiver. And so, uh, like I said, I think it's a very important, one of the most important things that I think I've done since I've sat on this council. And so, uh, like I said, we spent a lot of countless hours on this. And anybody was welcome to come to the meeting. I think Councilman Garcia did come to one of the meetings. And we could have been hashing out all of this, but I'm asking you guys to uh, help support this tonight. And any other questions? Uh, Clerk Santos, roll call to adopt Ordinance 19 dash. I'm sorry. I thought we did already. No. Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Orange? Yes. Dina? No. Perez? Yes. Oh. Monero? Too soon. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Councilwoman Orange. Mr. President, I would like to um, make a motion to have it read on second and third and final reading. So moved. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilman Monroe to hear ordinance 19 0008 on second and third reading. Any questions on the motion? Councilman Medina? I just want to express myself one <clears throat> final time. Uh, it's not that I'm against this program, and I understand we're trying to rush it uh, to get it in for the school year. But as important as this program is, it should be well defined and written. We have three or four lawyers working on this. Everyone should have had their input on there. Uh, those attorneys aren't even here to tell me that they're in favor of this program. This program should have been long, long time going with, within the school city. Did the superintendent drop, drop the ball and, and, and not establish a truancy program there? Why is it that we now have to step in and uh, sort of grab the bull by the horn and, and, and establish this? I would just like to have seen it written a little better, more clarified. Because once we pass this, there's nothing saying that nothing has to come back to us to get clarified. And uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Councilman. Uh, Mr. Mr. Garcia. Mr. Garcia. Appropriation would have to come to us, correct? Any, any money spent by the city would have to be approved by you. So this yeah. would this would have to be appropriated. Either as part of your budget process or as an additional appropriation. Uh, do we, we know where that's going to come from? Uh, it may be coming from a couple of places now. People have stepped up to the plate, and I don't want to say because then mm -hmm. they may back out. And I'll, but I would just leave it like that. If it has to come before the council then you'll have the appropriation. If it doesn't have to, then we'll have just passed an ordinance that somebody else is going to pay for. Thank you. Any other questions? Councilman Santos, roll call, please. Clerk Santos, Clerk Santos I'm sorry. Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes.
Castillo? Yes. Orange? Yes. Medina? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francisco? Yes. <clears throat> Clerk Santos, any ordinances on third reading? Yes, Mr. President. Ordinance 19 0011, sponsor Mayor Anthony Copeland. An ordinance to allow for the creation of new original art murals and the preservation of vintage original art murals on private property. Councilwoman Orange? Uh, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, table this ordinance uh, 19 uh, my understanding is that um, Attorney Bashimi uh, is still working on some out some language with them on this because this is not finished and this should be his last form. So we are I'm asking that we table this. Second. Motion was made by Councilwoman Orange, seconded by Councilwoman Vasquez to table 19 ordinance 19-0011. Any questions on the motion? Clerk Santos? Walker? Yes. Vasquez? Yes. Garcia? Yes. Horn? Yes. Medina? Yes. Monroe? Yes. Francisco? Yes. This time, do we have any resolutions? No, Mr. President. Do we have any old business? Moving on to new business. I believe we do have Reverend Wade here to speak on. say good evening Mr. President and to the council. I want to first of all thank you all for allowing us to come and share today. Uh, I want to express my gratitude first of all because of the support that was given to us for our conference, our grief conference uh, held in April. It was great support. Thank you so very much and then thank you for the opportunity to share tonight. Let me say by uh, Mr. President I want to greet you in the name of him who does all things well. This letter is extended to you in reference to the Back to God movement hosted by the J. E. Wade Ministries. This movement will be launched July 31st, 2019 at Washington Park, 6 o'clock p.m., 4298 Grand Boulevard, East Chicago, Indiana. Allow me to express the purpose and the goals of this <clears throat> Back to God movement. There is a divisive element in our area of Indiana. Crime is happening at an alarming rate. There's a falling away of the faith. Churches are going out of business. Schools are closing. Education is on the decline. Homelessness is the order of the day. Respect is antiquated. Children are being raised in single family homes. There are layoffs, cutbacks. There's political division. Our society has become a society of technology. Racism has blinded the human family. There are friendships, but no relationships. I want to share this evening, there must be a partnership between the political and the religious community. This Back to God movement would help us reconnect with God and with one another. We must do our individual and collective parts. By doing so, we become the force that changes the lives of our people from the bottom up, one day at a time. We must be in agreement and have unity. Unity does not mean losing your identity. It simply means working with others in agreement. Everything is made better in harmony. Our church will be rekindled and our lives will be changed. 
Our schools will be the educational center of our community. Our cities can flourish. Love will become the order of the day. Crime will dissipate. Children will be raised in a godly home and family will reconnect one with the other. There will be a revival of racism and relationships. Businesses will be revitalized. People will feel free, safe in our city. It's not about race, creed, color, or denomination. It's about a back to God movement. Jesus Christ was our Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is our guide. There's a passage that says in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added. Then our community will again be one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. If you will look, you will see Washington Park, 6 o'clock p.m. on uh, July 31st, We'll have Pastor Charles Thompson will be our minister, one of our sharing pastors. Pastor Apostle Kelly Williams, one of our pastors, Great Destiny Bible Church. He'll be sharing from 5 30 to 6 o'clock. We'll be in prayer. And we want people to know that people need God. We have laws, we have all the things happening, but people need God. And when people get God, their lives will be changed. So we're asking this council to join us. Be present. We want you to see. I appreciate you all representing. You've been given donations. I want this council present. I want you to see what God is going to do there. And as a result, we can have a collaborative partnership in seeing where do we go from here. God bless you and thank you for listening. Thank you, Reverend. Do you have any other new business? <clears throat> Moving on to public expression, if you could please keep your comments to three minutes. I believe we do have one. This is Vanessa Hernandez-Orange. Good evening all, my name is Vanessa Hernandez Orange. I live at 1620 Senator Drive, and I'm here to speak to the council um, on a couple notes. I'm a resident, I'm a police wife, and I'm a school board trustee. First and foremost, this truancy ordinance that we have is gonna affect all of us as residents. Um, this is our biggest issue that we have in the schools. We have a couple members who either have worked for our schools as well as we're trustees, and you guys all understand the fact that at one point in time, our attendance is extremely high. Um, it's continuously at that point right now, and not just in East Chicago, but throughout the state. We have multiple people, uh, family members who are working during the day, so they don't know that their kids are actually running around. Uh, my parents live two blocks down from Central High School, and we have watched kids on multiple times just come down the street during school hours. Again, one of those individuals could go and break into a home, do graffiti, who knows. Uh, and it's your homes that are going to be um, vandalized. So again, I say that this affects every single one of us. And I am truly appreciative of the council reading this and passing this now solely because we as a school board also have to pass the policy in order to go with the ordinance. We could not have passed the policy unless you guys had passed it first. Um, not only that, I'm grateful to everyone who has worked on this project, all the lawyers, their attorneys, Marcus Jefferson, for giving everyone in the room to discuss this. Um, I'm, I understand that everything is not written out, but I think the whole issue was we had to write out the ordinance so that we in turn as the school city could adopt the policy. Um, we're making our efforts. I'm making sure it's in the handbook. I know the lawyers have checked the Indiana codes to make sure that we're all in accordance and to make sure that it will not interfere in any way. Uh, we've also looked at uh, different entities as in the Hammonds, the Lowe's, the Holbert, to make sure that we are going with what they are going with so that if for some reason they go after one school, they have to go after all of us. Um, another thing I would like to say is uh, it's very important to know that if a student misses 10 days of school, they're basically going to fail the year. And yes, we do not have the capability or the funds to, to sponsor this, but we're grateful to those who are actually all coming on board to think about the child. You guys all represent our schools, our, our, our children too. You don't just represent the adults. So this ordinance truly was for constituents that you still represent. Again, thank you very much for passing this today. Um, and we will do our due diligence within the schools to work with the council and keep moving forward on multiple things. Thank you. 
Thank you. I believe there's no more public expression. Um, I have a motion to adjourn, please? So moved. Second, Second, Mr. President. Motion was made by Councilman Medina, seconded by Councilman Garcia. Clerk Santos, roll call, please. Walker? Yes. Ashworth? Yes. Garcia? Yes. 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 Good night.